Here, I'm going to show you how to do this with a simple click, highlight your data however you want. Here, we're going to do averages, max, and min, but the skills I'm going to show you can be applied for whatever calculation you want. Top 5, top 10, however you want, this system is going to work for you. And it should look pretty darn nice when we're finished with it. And the best part is it requires no programming, no code whatsoever. However, if you do want to learn how to automate your workbooks and save yourself hours of time every week, take a look at my full VBA course. I've got a link to it below this video. Now I'm going to remove everything except for the data and let's make this work. Now we're left only with the data. The magic is gone. But the magic was really only two things. Conditional formatting plus a checkbox. That's it. So let's take a look at the conditional formatting. Go to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, and you can go to Manage Rules or New Rule in this case. We want to go to Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. And what we're going to do is to create a custom formula, four of them, one for each checkbox, that will allow us to control if the cell should be highlighted or not, or whatever formatting change we want. And all we have to do is to create a formula in here that will return true or false but we're not going to create it right here because it can be tricky. So uh, let's first start with our conditional formatting and then we'll add the checkboxes later. So what I like to do, if it's going to be maybe a complex formula, is to mirror my data set up here. And I've got a really good tutorial. I'm making complex conditional formatting tutorials. I'll put a link to it below this video. But for this, I don't think it's gonna to get too complex. All we need is a formula that returns true or false. And for the first checkbox, we want to check if it is below average or not. So is this cell below the average value of all of the other periods? So is C4 less than the average of this? And it returns true or false. But with conditional formatting, you have to remember, it's essentially going to copy the formula to the right and down. So we need to get our references correct because we don't want it to move like that. So we go here and we can select that F4 dollar sign so it will not change. But for C4, we want it to be able to change for all of these cells. So I can hit enter and we can go over and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, remove this one and check it out. First one, perfect. Second one, perfect. So that's a simple way to get your conditional formatting formulas done correctly. Now uh, let us clear these out and I'm just going to write out the other formulas that we require. So we want to check if it's below average and then if it is above average, all we need is one little change for that. Less than becomes a greater than. And now we need a max and a min. And I have created a helper column for that. I've made other tutorials on helper columns. Basically, they are amazing. So this is the original data. And the total column is the helper column. It was added to make our formulas a little bit easier to make. So simple sum right there. So how do we check if this row right here has the maximum or the minimum value? Let's go first for max. Well, very simple. So is this right here equal to the maximum value from this column. But let's not forget the dollar signs. So we do not want this reference to change at all. Dollar signs around the columns and the rows. But for M4, we want it to go up and down for the rows, but not the columns. So dollar signs simply in front of the column reference. And now let's grab that. Go over here and change max to min. And there we go. We now have all of our conditional formatting formulas and we could apply it to this guy, but we can't yet control if they are on or off. And that's what we add next. How do we do that? Well, a simple true false check. So what we're going to do is let's highlight these cells down here in yellow. 
we are going to have a series of true and false values placed into these cells. We are going to use the check boxes in order to do that. Then we are going to use these values to make a new formula with these formulas to control if they can be used or not. This may sound a little bit confusing, but it'll be clear very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and put some default values in here. True, 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 true. We take our working formula right here. We copy that guy. And then we go down here and type equals and a great function that is going to check whether all arguments are true and return true only if all arguments are true. For our first argument, uh, let us select this new cell that has true in it and then comma, paste in the working formula that we made previously and close that guy up. Now it only is going to say true right here when both of these say true. If this says false, that's going to say false. That's how we control if the conditional formatting is on or off. And all we do now is to repeat that for all of these. So we grab the working formula. Notice I keep saying a working formula and then pop that guy in there, in there. I say working formula because you want to make sure everything works before you get to this step. It is much easier to build everything out piece by piece than all at once. And for the uh, last guy, equals and down there, comma, all right. But uh, let us not forget one last thing. We do not want the cell reference C15 to change. So we can click it and hit F4. And let's do that for all of these. This is probably the number one mistake for conditional formatting formulas at least the number one mistake that I make when I'm making formulas. It's just so easy to forget. So uh, let us grab this and copy it. And now where do we want to apply it? So for this one, we only want the period values. So for the below average or the above average, what's going to highlight? Just these guys. So I select it going from upper left to bottom right and then home, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, paste it in, format, and let's go to font, color, red, then OK, OK, and to test it out, let's change this to true. There you go. <laughs> it's so cool when it comes together. It really is. All right, let's grab uh, this one, and we're going to do it for the same data set. Uh, this guy, home, conditional formatting, new rule, formula, paste, format, and let's make it a green. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, how about for this? For this one, the max and the min values, I want to highlight the entire row. So we need to select everything, not just the periods. Now home, formatting, new rule, formula, and format. Let's go back to fill and we'll make this one a light green for the max. Okay. Okay. And we are starting to get there. One last condition. And there we go. Format, fill, let's use the orange. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And we can test these guys out. False. 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 And false. Perfect. So all we need now is a way to control these. And we have an amazing feature on the developer tab. Insert checkbox. But if you don't have the developer tab, just right click up here on the ribbon and go to customize the ribbon. In the right over here, check next to developer. Hit OK. Then developer, insert, checkbox. And we can click where we want it. Let's put it right here for now. 
and we can click right in here or if you are selected away right click and go to edit text and we will delete everything and type max click away and we now have a checkbox but it's not connected to anything so right click go to format control then control tab cell link click in here and click the cell that's going to have the true false value now that's all the cell is going to do so we don't have to have it out here in public like this i just want to make it easy to see everything in the tutorial hit enter and okay or enter again now we have a checkbox that controls everything notice false becomes true and vice versa when i click the checkbox here how cool is that so all you do now is to make three more checkboxes and did I just type max here when I meant to have below average? Yes, I did. <laughs> Control click and click in there again, below average. And now what I'm going to do is to make four more of these. I'm not going to bore you with that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Make them, edit the text, and link them to these cells. Now we have some working checkboxes. <laughs> it's so cool when it comes together. Just a few simple things. Conditional formatting with a formula and a checkbox. Now let's make it look even nicer. If you want to move these around a little bit easier, by the way, you can always right click them and then just click again and go to the edge and move them around. Or you can do control and click and then move them around. But what we want now, oh, and when you're on there, you can go to Shape Format and then go to Align and Snap to Grid or Snap to Shape to help put them together in a way that looks nice. But what we want now is to make that nice little box that goes around it. So go to Insert, Illustrations, Shapes, and Rounded Rectangle. The Rounded Rectangle is your friend. Click and draw that guy. Then we'll go to Shape Format and Shape Fill and put it at a gray then right click and go to send to back it is just now off the screen so what i'm going to do is to move it up so you can see that command right click send to back that one right there now i'm going to move it back down and you can see what happens when i click it bam it goes behind all of the check boxes and you can make it look nicer and neater. You can make it look like it's floating by adding a shadow from the shape format tab. You can do so many cool things. And now you're good to go. You want to drop off the grid lines and the headings and the formula bar. Even better. Perfect. You want to hide these guys or remove them. Go ahead and put them somewhere else in the worksheet and hide the columns or just go to this and let's change the background and the text. So white, white, and then it looks like there's nothing there. So you have a lots and lots of options for formatting. But that's how you can create this great little setup where you can switch on and off your highlighting using checkboxes. And don't forget, if you want to learn even more in Excel, check out my Excel online courses. I've got a link to them below this video. But for this tutorial, uh, that's all there is. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all my new tutorials. And give it a like if you enjoyed this video.